Welcome to Jerry Brewer Alumni Stadium. Tonight, the Jasper Wildcats playing a game against another SIAC foe, the Bossy Bulldogs. The Wildcats coming into this game 3-0, and they will take on a Bulldog team looking for their first win at 0-2. Hello, everybody. I'm Craig Schneider along with Bob Welp and Jeremy Marcos on the video. And Bob, kind of take a look at this football game. Obviously, the Wildcats with great success last week with a big win over the Wrights Panthers 35-14 to get to that 3-0 record where they stand at the top of the SIAC Conference along with Central and Evansville North. And um, it was just a football game that the Wildcats kind of took control, I'm not going to say early on, but at least they were moving the ball with the football, obviously uh, running the football. Um, no passing yards, 0 for 1 passing, but they have 59 or 58 plays with 395 yards rushing, and they were led by Lance Dawkins, 176 yards and one touchdown. Blake Mann had 19 carries for 147 yards and three first-half touchdowns. And, you know, it's just one of those games where the Wildcats pretty well did what they wanted to do offensively. Defensively gave up, um, obviously, 172 yards passing in the first half where Bricky was kind of moving the ball around and throwing it all over the field in that first half. But in the second half, I thought the defense did a great job of kind of getting settled in and making some big plays to pretty well take control of that football game. Well, Coach Lewis alluded to it earlier. He believes that the condition that these uh, Wildcats are in wore them down late in the game. Now, I'm kind of with you. I, I, I never felt uh, that the game was in, in doubt. I, I mean, the way Jasper was going, it could have came down in that first half with the shootout of who had the ball last. But Jasper's defense, it was all about the adjustments at halftime. Coach uh, Shelton got up there, and the defensive backs that were given seven-yard cushions were now giving four-yard cushions. And I'm sure he went up and said, Gentlemen, trust your athletic ability. And that's what they did. And that was the big turning point. Offense, really, it never really changed. Right. Um, the, the biggest thing that I got out of that whole game, besides the W, which is the most important, was the trust that the coaching staff had with Grant Young. Fourth and one hmm. on R28. Right, right. And, and he gets three yards, gets the first down. I mean, that's one of those to where people start to question if it doesn't work. You know, if it works, you're a genius. If not, well, you're you're the other one. Right. But, uh, absolute great trust, and, and they have it in each of their uh, players out there. So Jasper's a complete team right now. Well, and I think one thing with that, too, is also the confidence that you have in your offensive line. So, you know, that line is pretty well, no matter who you put back there. I mean, obviously, uh, Mann has had some success. But uh, Dawkins has been great, you know, especially with his plays between the tackles and all that. But that offensive line of Ashton Sheeter, Tyler Kelly, Carson Chanley, and then on the left side with Quade Pope and Gus Heichelbeck. I mean, it seems like if, if, if Day's running the football, he's getting open space. Berger's seeing some openings. And then obviously with Grant Young, when he, he had his series that he ran the football there for the Wildcats. I just think that offensive line is just really communicating well, and they're doing a great job of really dominating the line of scrimmage in their first three games. You're absolutely right. When people talk about Jasper football, the two names that come to the forefront, of course, are Lance Dawkins and Blake Mann, and rightfully so. I mean, great great guys. But one thing I'm going to watch tonight is the offensive line that you just mentioned. I really want to concentrate on seeing how far runners actually get down the field before contact. You know, I thought they did a pretty good job in the rights uh, game, but the offensive line is getting into the numbers, driving the guys back, and when they slip off, they go pick somebody else up. Right. And so they have some of that old school mentality, and I think that uh, this offense doesn't do anything if that offensive line, uh, if they take a hit across there. I mean, those guys are solid right now, led by Pope and Shanley, the seniors. Absolutely. And I think the other thing, too, when you talk about the defense, again, it was a 21-14 game at halftime, Jasper ahead, but Wright's on their uh, first possession where they were basically looked like it was going to be a touchdown pass that he was lofting out there into the end zone, but it was an outstanding play, and I think at the time we didn't realize who made that play, but it was Ian Geeser, number 16, who knocked the ball away at the last second, and it got bounced around before Mann was able to pick that off. So that was a key play because that ties the football game at that point. Wildcats still had that lead 21-14 in the fourth quarter, and um, Wrights actually was was in their territory, uh, deep into their territory. And, uh, you know, when Michael Beekler made that sack and they lost 20 yards on that third down and forced them to punt, and then the Wildcats score in the next possession. At that point, now you're 28-14. you got control of the football game with about four minutes to go. The, 
there were so many, uh, I, I talk about the Grant Young, but there were so many big keys in that game. And the one that you just mentioned by Beekler when he came in from his defensive end spot, he, he played it perfectly. He came in, he was under control. He did not let the quarterback roll left or right. And by the time the quarterback got his feet, he had the speed to get to him. So you're right. Uh, some, there's a lot of players on this defense that are making individual plays. But at the end of the night, it's 11 guys playing as one. Right. Now we're taking on a bossy team that has uh, given up over 100 points in their first two games, 103 points. But, you know, again, this is a program that is just really trying to find their way. And they've got a new coach, DeMarcus Scanaway who actually, uh, he played football high school-wise at Ben Davis, which is a great program everybody knows about in the state of Indiana. Played some college ball at Kentucky Wesleyan. Even had a stint with the New York Jets in the NFL. So he's a coach that's trying to instill some, you know, pride and discipline and uh, just trying to get, you know, more of these bossy, uh, you know, the student body out for football. And so that's that's the challenge that he's facing as he's in his first year. But there's... Grant Maringer with a great run straight up the middle, pretty well untouched before he gets into bossy territory. So Maringer with an outstanding run, and the Wildcats will have great field position to start their first drive at the 42-yard line in, in uh, Bulldog territory. Well, we talked about how the offensive line is getting into their guys and staying on their bodies. On that return right there, our return team got their guys, pushed them into the middle, but stayed with them. Maringer had a great and away he went. Good return, great field position. So around 50 yards, we'll say, as far as the return there. So first and 10 from the 43. Man is the quarterback for the Wildcats, of course. But we're going to have a, a change in the backfield for the Wildcats tonight. And uh, it, it is definitely a Dawkins back there, but it's number 14. Luke Dawkins getting the start, the junior, the brother of Lance Dawkins, who is actually dinged up, and he is not in uniform tonight. He's down there in, in uh, basically his jersey and shorts. But, uh, yeah, cheering his brother on as he gets his first carry of the night. Well, uh, hopefully he'll have something to brag about to his brother by the end of the evening. All right, so, man, there he sees an opening. And, again, just where he left off last week, an outstanding football game overall he played. And he gets a big gainer there for a first down, gain of 10 on that play. So first and 10, or actually 12, and they'll spot it at the 29-yard line. Well, we're going to need some of those big plays tonight because when you look at Luke Dawkins coming in for his brother, you know, Lance comes in at 213, and Luke comes in at 165. So those short yards are, you know, maybe a little tougher. All right, so first and 10 for the Wildcats in the 29, and... Man will keep it again. Now he sees an opening to the outside. Can he get to the end zone? And it looks like he will get inside the pylon, and he'll take it 29 yards for the touchdown. So two touches for Man, 12 yards and a first down, and the next one 29 yards and puts six points on the board. Well, paying attention to those two plays uh, by Man on, on the far side when he went through, he got down four yards before anybody laid a finger on him. That particular play there, nobody touched him. So the offensive line pinned them down. I mean, outstanding. Yeah, there were actually a, a couple players on the offensive line that were questionable tonight, but it looks like they're starting. That's Carson Chanley, number 79, and Quade Pope, 69. And the extra point by Sermersheim goes straight through. So just like that, we are not even barely a minute into it, a minute and 18 seconds, and the Wildcats are on the board already, 7 to nothing here on 18 WJTS. So we're back once again here at Jerry Brewer Alumni Stadium. Game played on Joe Rolletter Field and the Wildcats with a quick 7-0 lead. The kickoff return by Grant Maringer set up the Wildcats at the 43-yard line of Bossy, so his return of around 50 yards or more. And then Dawkins with a two-yard run, and then right after that it was Manny. He runs 12 yards for a first down and 29 yards for the touchdown run. And Sermersheim with a... Line drive kick fielded right there at the 10-yard line. And now Bossy showing some quickness getting to the outside there and trying to see the number if it was five or six who returned that football. But looks like it was number six for the Bulldogs. And that is Darian Harden, five foot five. And just a freshman, five foot five, 140 pounds. And he's actually going to get the start in the backfield there for the or for the uh, Bulldogs. Well, I'm hoping that uh, Potts and Kibby and Kelly, who's in for Dawkins on the line, and Beagler are going to be able to hold their own. It's a great start to this game. Let's just keep it going when we're on the decent defensive side of the ball. All right, so the freshman gets the first carry of the ball game, and 
he will rush it about three yards. We'll give him credit there. So, again, Darian Harden, just a freshman. But now their quarterback actually started as a sophomore last year. That's Braylon Bame. And, uh, you know, he is he's a player that's committed to this bossy football team and this bossy program because uh, in the preseason article where they were talking along with Ganaway where he was talking about he spent a lot of time this summer watching a lot of film and, and working with Ganaway as far as leadership of this football team. But he actually goes down with a quick sack there. But, you know, last year threw for 775 yards and four touchdowns. However, 12 interceptions, and obviously with a football team last year it was 2-8, and eight, and you're going to have your struggles. But, again, he's a, he's a player that's committed to helping build this bossy program. And, and he can throw the ball downfield. Now, he was very, very young last year. He's got a little bit more of experience. You know, maybe things really start to pick up for him, but you and I were seeing him throw the ball 40 yards right on money, right in, in warm-ups. All right, so Bain back in the throw, and he actually, again, more pressure by the Wildcats, so the Cats just – where they left off in the second half of last week doing the job and pretty well going to be calling a lot of the same numbers as far as Kibby and Potts and Beekler. I'm sure they'll be all over the quarterback and in the backfield most of the night tonight. Well, Potts and Kibby just absolutely crushed the offensive line on that side and pushed him right back in, up into it. The defensive ends are staying wide enough to where he can't roll out, so if he moves in the pocket, he's got to step up, and our interior pressure is uh, right on the point. So actually, I think we may have some movement on the right side, the way the official's pointing there, unless they have too many players on the field or something too. Yeah, I think that may be the case. So that's going to be five yards. Actually running off the field there was number 28, Kimonte Madison. I think that's... Uh isn't the arm across the chest there? Isn't that uh, illegal substitution? So I don't know if that's what they signaled, but like I said, the extra player ran off the field there, so they're actually going to punt. And Maringer right. gets his hand on it, so Maringer doing the job with the special teams tonight. And just like that, the Wildcats will have fantastic field position for the second drive here, this time starting at the 37. You know, when you talk about Jasper, you talk about the complete team that they they are playing like to this point. Especially teams are are extremely important now. Usually, you don't see them on, on the field as much as the offensive defense, of course. But when they're on there, it, you got to stop them from making the big play. And so far, they are just this year have just been outstanding. So first and ten, day comes in motion. They're going to run the option to the left side, but man, again, just left wide open on the. That left side, and he's going to get across the sideline. And will he take it in for a second score? Yes, he does. So Blake Mann, again, that triple option. It's give it to the fullback. Quarterback keeps it, or he pitches out to the slot back behind him. But again, Mann's just seeing wide open daylight there and takes that one 37 yards for another score. That's just too easy. I mean, I, the one thing Bossy will bring, even though they have a lot of inexperience right now and they're trying to buy into a new system, the one thing Bossy will always bring is speed. And man's just running away from him. So Sermersheim out there to kick another extra point. He was perfect on off five again last week and so far two for two tonight. So 14 to nothing, 9.08 to go here in the first quarter. Jasper dominating, I'm sorry, dominating Bossy early here on 18 WJTS. So barely two minutes into this football game, three minutes really, and the Wildcats with a 14 nothing lead and another kickoff and the freshman will bring it out. He's got some speed to the outside, but the Cats close quickly and gets just beyond the 20, was spotted at about the 23 yard line. So, you know, that's the thing with Darian Harden. He's showing some quickness there and if they can kind of get him involved a little bit more with the offense, we'll see if they can on this second series of downs, but Looks like a really good young athlete for this bossy team. You know, you had brought up that, asked me about when we played bossy, and uh, Jasper tonight, it, it seems like almost the same game plan. The pursuit of the backside has to be at, at home. They cannot get crazy because when they come out so fast, if they plant their foot and go the other way and we're out of line, we're in trouble. All right, so Bame. 
the quarterback on his second series, and he gives it to the freshman on the right side, quickly getting to the line of scrimmage, but the Cats close quickly on that play, so he's only going to pick up maybe about a yard or so. Nice job of getting through the hole. Defensive linebackers came up and stuck it pretty well. Uh, off the defensive lineman in, in, inside with Kibbe was able to stand up his offensive line, which allowed our linebackers to move around. We were able to, to bring him down for a short game. So pick up a two actually on the play, second down. Jasper up 14-0 on the two-man touchdowns early on. The Wildcats' first two possessions. Now a pitch out there just a little bit short. Looking for a split in out there, and that's Aaron Leonard, number two. Well, just watching individual uh, linemen from time to time, Kibbe came off the ball so hard, he had his guy four yards back. And if you notice the, the punishment that the quarterback's taken, he got rid of that ball way before he wanted to, and that's why it fluttered to the ground. Good pressure by the interior defense. So the Boffs, the offensive line, everyone well over 200 pounds with a couple of players, 265 and 250 there. Now Bame's going to run to the outside, and he's looking downfield and just cannot quite get it there, so it's going to fall incomplete, so another three and out for the bossy Bulldogs there as he was trying to hit number 23. And I'm trying to find him on my There was two or three of them that I seen on the roster when they were announced in the, in the pregame that their numbers didn't jive. Actually, it was Anthony Wide, 5'7", junior. So bossy three and out again. So the Wildcat defense doing it early on. Again, you know, the bossy Bulldogs who've given up over 100 yard, or 100 points so far in this season. They did score 13 against Vincennes, but were shut out by Evansville Central, 62 to nothing. And, you know, and that's another thing, too, that DeMarcus Ganaway is trying to instill in this bossy program is just the discipline. And, you know, as you look out there and you see another player not on the field, and that's Darius. Allison, number 79, kind of having to run out there at the last minute. So two quick penalties on both of their punts so far. Let's see if the Cats and there's Grant Mariner going after it, but not there. But Day's going to have a chance to return here from the 49-yard line across midfield and gets across the 40. So Cats will have great field position again at the 38 to start their third drive. Day gives a great example of the never-say-die attitude that the black and gold have this year. When he first caught that, he had two bossy players there. It looked about the 45 where they were going to drop him, but he would have none of it and kept driving and pushed it down to the 39. Attitudes like that will get you a far, far away. So three possessions, all three starting in bossy territory here. Some man under center, and we'll see if we'll have more touches for Luke Dawkins, who's playing that tailback position. That's another thing the Cats want to work on is their passing game tonight, and he finds Day across the middle, and Day's going to take it in. So, man, doing it on the ground with two touchdowns. Now has a touchdown pass. This one goes for 39 yards as he finds wide open in the middle of the football field, Isaac Day for a touchdown. It is just really doing my heart well to see the start that Jasper has tonight. The next two games they have are huge because then they start the gauntlet, you know, when, they're, when they've got Central and Castle and North all on the road. So you got to have these two. You, you hope as a fan to get a good start, and that's just what the Jasper Wildcats have given their fans tonight. And Sermersheim stays perfect on the season as he just edges that through the left upright. So in the last three offensive plays for the Wildcats, Mann has run for two touchdowns and has now passed for one. And the Wildcats dominate 21-0 with 7.57 to go here in the first quarter on 18 WJTS. Sermersheim has it teed up. Again, he's been perfect on extra points. He did miss a field goal last week against Memorial, and he's still working on his kickoffs there. And, oh, actually, he loses the handle of the football, and the Wildcats pick it up. So just like that, and again, one of the stars of the special teams this year has been Will Weinzapple, number nine. He had some nice big hits earlier in the season against Harrison, and tonight comes up with a fumble recovery there. You know, it... It's fun when things go your way, but the intensity early, early, early in this game, but yet 21 points, 
their intensity is, is really on the rise, even when they're starting to get in some clean jerseys this early in the game. Or did I miss that? Was that Peter recovered that? <laughs> Again, tough time seeing the numbers. Now he's trying to find all Fran on the first play there on a slant pattern. But it falls incomplete there, so. You know, it, it may not seem like that big a deal to a lot of people, but putting the ball up in the air so when other people get this game film, you know, they're like, well, if they have to throw, they can throw. You know, of course, against rights, when you demolish them like you did on the ground, you don't put it in the air, but it's good to let teams know that you can do it if you need it. All right, so man again trying to hook up with Aubrey does on the left side this time, and it's close to the 10-yard line, just a little bit shy there, but I think it should be enough for a first down. We'll see where they spot it, and if they do move the chains. Now we'll see a pickup of nine and just short. Nice job of, of on the curl and, and, and Albrand catching the ball, um, coming across the middle to the ball instead of letting the ball come to him because the defender was in the area. Did a nice job of getting that in curl and, and just coming up short. So third down and one. Man's going to run the option, and he will keep it. Looking for the end zone again, but won't get there. He'll get inside the five, though, and it'll be a first and goal right there at about the three-yard line. I'm not one to question an opponent's game plan, but man has, as you knew his reputation coming in, and, and the way he's gouged you tonight, the defensive pursuit is still going to the pitch man or they're going to the up man. And, and Blake's just absolutely lit him up tonight. <laughs> you, you might want to pay a little bit more attention to number five. So man has just been doing the job all year, reading that triple option offense that the Wildcats run. Now they give it to Dawkins on the left side, and he's able to take it in. So Luke Dawkins, number 14, 5 foot 11 junior, takes it in for the Wildcats fourth touchdown. And we haven't played half of the first quarter yet. At 6.24 on the clock, 27 to nothing. So the Wildcats taking advantage of the fumble on the kickoff return. Recovered right there at the 20-yard line. And Sermersheim stays true. So four PATs kicked through by number 12, and it's 28 to nothing. Jasper with 6.24 to go here in the first quarter here on 18 WJTS. All right, this time Sam Leonard's going to kick off for the Wildcats, and he gets a boot that's going to be, again, fielded inside the 20 there, and Cats quickly on top of it. So return to about the 26-yard line. So the Wildcats taking advantage of the fumble recovery on the kickoff and actually, actually recovered by Ross Peter. I think I said it was Winesapple, but regardless, both been outstanding with their play this year on the special teams. Grant Maringer has been playing well tonight with a kickoff return to start this football game and a block punt. So the Wildcats special teams doing the job tonight. You know, that's one thing that uh, you can say about the uh, the whole Jasper team out there. You, you can pick out the special teams. You can pick out Manger. You can pick out Day. But you, there's each and every player out there. You've got positives saying about them, and, and that's that's just awesome. It's a Braylon Bean. Again, look, look at that. Just quick pressure. Nowhere to go. And the offensive line for the Bossy Bulldogs just having a tough time keeping guys like Jacob Potts from getting all over their quarterback. So it's just way too difficult if you cannot keep the defense all over your backfield there because the play just will not develop. Well, a couple of times Bossy tried to go up to the outside and Potts and, and uh, Beekler both shut it down. So they've noticed that it's not been there. So they're trying to go inside. You know, but when you got Kelly and Kibby saying, you know, not so fast, those four guys are just tearing it up. It's five yards on the loss on that play, and now he's trying to throw out to the outside. And, again, the communication not there with Emmanuel Fisher, number one, who cut inside, but the quarterback chucking out to the sideline, nobody there. Well, I, I disagree with you, Craig. Uh, Jack Ubelar from Jasper was standing right there, number 75, <laughs> ball came right to him. Did he catch it? <laughs> Off the turf, maybe. 
Well, yeah, he, and you know, the thing is with this bossy program, I mean, the Wildcats have played them, I think, eight times total. Jasper leads the series seven to one. And, um, but, you know, bossy just with one winning season in the past 20 years, and that was 2013 when Coach DeAndre, or Coach Andre Thomas, led them to a seven and five record as Fame cannot connect in the backfield. So it's going to be another three and out, but. You know, again, it's, it's um, you know, a program that's had success over the years. I mean, you go back as far as sectional championships, they have won four overall, and most recently in 2010, you know, they didn't have a winning season that year, but they were able to pull off a sectional championship by uh, knocking off Memorial 21-14. to 14. They finished with a 5-8 and eight record, but see, that's the nice thing. When you get a little bit of a run in the tournament, you know, everybody makes a tournament now as opposed to back in the day whenever – you know, you had to qualify for the tournament. And so, you know, there are teams that can still make runs. And now there's Peter making another defensive play in, on the special team. So number two, Ross Peter having a night tonight as he tackles the punter in the backfield. And the Wildcats will have the football at the 10-yard line here. But, you know, again, it just takes a lot of commitment and, a, and, and just a, a, a new attitude to be able to build a football program that struggled for so long like Bossy has. Yeah, and, and that last play, it, it, it was a perfect uh, visual on exactly what you were talking about. The, the up man, from, the first guy up from the uh, punter, that last line of defense, was actually so far back the punter ran into him. And then we finished him off from there. All right, so the Wildcats actually starting to make some changes in the backfield there as the quarterback change there, Grant Young. Saw some great action whenever man had some problems with with some leg cramps last week. And oh, Grant Young was able to keep the Wildcats. I mean, he did fumble on that drive, but you were talking about that fourth down conversion that he had. But, you know, it just seems like that, you know, Coach Lewis has got some confidence in this kid. And obviously we're building for the future. You know, he's just a sophomore. But, uh, again, just put him in the backfield and, and things will continue on. Well, he does a nice job of reading. There was a great read, great move. Beautiful play. Again, he did that against Harrison last week. So just two quick plays. And the Wildcats back on the scoreboard again, 34 to nothing. But, uh, you know, again, that's what you got to be able to do. If you're going to run that triple offense, option offense, you got to have a quarterback that can make those reads and have the quickness to be able to make the moves. And we're seeing it with Mann, and we're also seeing it with Young this year. Well, the one thing about Young, even though that he's coming in behind Mann, Sheeter, the center, is in the same grade. So they've played in youth and, and all that, but you come into the game speed, you're going to get the drop from, you know, the fumble from the center once in a while. But, boy, when it was big time to, to show up on that fourth and one, he sure did. So you're right, the future looks bright. All right, so we have another penalty. All sides against Bossy. So the struggles continue for this Bulldog team tonight. Had a number of penalties, and again, the Wildcats pretty well. Every touch is almost going into the end zone. But the Wildcats stay perfect with the extra point, and that was actually kicked by Sam Leonard this time and held by William Schmidt. So Jasper on the board, 35 to nothing, 4.41 to go here, still in the first quarter on 18 WJTS. Sam Leonard with his second kickoff of the night after kicking an extra point. Getting his name in the books there, and now the kickoff is fielded at the 15-yard line. Quickness by the freshman, and this time he's got some running room, and it takes Leonard, the kicker, to save Fossey from going a long way on that kickoff return. So a nice play there by the Bulldogs, number six, Darian Harden, the freshman, returning it all the way to the 42-yard line, by far their best field position of the night. Well, a prime example of what I was talking about with Jasper and their never-say-die attitude when the running back for uh, or the receiver on the kickoff for Bossy broke the one, they chased him all the way down, then the defense kept him out. Even our kicker is getting up there and putting the chin strap on him. It's Ooh, just what not a pop happen. there. Trying to see, was that Peter making the play there? Trying to look at the monitor there. Yes, it was. So Peter's having a football game tonight. Very physical out there, making some plays. And this time he does it in the backfield and knocks Bossy back for about a yard loss there. Well, when you have your elder statesman out there 
playing physical like that, like man has been playing. We've seen the punishment he's uh, distributed on opponents. It, it's easy to uh, catch fire with other players. Fame chucks it out there, connects on his first completion, and that's got some running room there. Still moving, so getting across midfield, so he hooks up with Anthony Wide, and Wide takes that all the way to the 25-yard line. Well, bossy speed will, will go, but we made a mistake there. We reached up and tried to bring him down with one arm. Stay fundamental, just like you did. Don't get lazy. I know you got a big lead, but stay focused. So about 35 yards on the hook up there. Now the quarterback, Bame, loses the handle there as he was trying to get to the outside. So the Wildcats are able to get some penetration in the backfield, and Cats making some changes on the defensive side. We'll try to point some out there, but out there playing a defensive end right now is number 44, Noah Willoughby, in on the play. Well, when he when he rolled out for, uh, you know, the, some of the mistakes he's made tonight, that one right there really, really saved him in the sense that they still have an opportunity. If he'd have tried to pick that up with all the black shirts that were around him, that could have been another sheeter going the other way. Right. So the fumble actually about a 10 yard loss. Uh, we'll say about a nine yard loss there and Bossy's gonna call a timeout. So Bossy on this drive, first on the kickoff return by Darian Harden. Set him up nicely, then a 35 yard hookup and they're now sitting at the 34 yard line with second and nine when we come back here on 18 WJTS. All right, so number 11, Braylon Bain, trying to keep his bossy drive alive here. The 35 yard hookup, but then lost nine yards on his last play. Now he's scrambling out and looking to find some opening and he's gonna get maybe back to the line of scrimmage and Beekler's still out there, number 24, putting pressure on him to force him to step up in the pocket there, but no gain, maybe a loss of a yard or so, but we'll still call it third and 19. But even I, the focus of the defensive backs are, are still evidently in check because he did a nice job of rolling out to the numbers and turning the quarterback back into the pressure. And then there was just, it was just good night Lucille, you know? Mm -hmm. So Maringer's still out there, number one. Allbrand's over here split out with the wide Look receiver. That pressure. Pass across the middle, and oh, Peter almost comes up with an interception there. Would have been his second, second recovery of a turnover. He recovered a fumble, and then if he'd have picked that pass off, but it falls incomplete, will force a fourth down situation. Obviously, Bossy will go for it in Wildcat territory here at the 34. That, that's just one of those where Peter was taken off with the ball before he had it in his hands. Because he had played it perfectly, had his body in perfect position, ready to go the other way and probably take it to the house. Eyes got a little bit too big, didn't, and made the silly mistake of not looking it in. Right. All right, so fourth down now for the Bulldogs. Fame's gonna go long this time. And now it's just a jump ball, and the ball falls incomplete. So the Wildcats doing the job over there, and that's Geeser number 16 on the play. Well, one of the few times that the bossy offensive line gave him time to throw. And he, he did put it down there. Now it was kind of a lame duck going down, but, you know, Jasper's smart enough to know, you know, they're looking at, you know, 19 yards for a first down or somewhere in that neighborhood and just took the long ball away. We had three defenders over there, had no chance of being completed. All right, so I think that was a sideline warning there. So the Cats will have the football first and 10 from the 34. And this game now belongs to Grant Young, the quarterback, number seven. And uh, just in the backfield, I can't see, is that you know, Dawkins is still back here, number 14. I saw Michael Beekler, he's actually playing a tight end spot. So it makes a move from the defensive side to the offensive side, but the Wildcats do jump on that play, so it's gonna set them back five yards to the 29. Well, nobody more upset with Mr. Beekler than Mr. Beekler himself as he comes off that field, he got the penalty thrown on him. And uh, coach is bringing him over, telling him to make sure he keeps his head in the game, make sure he stays focused on it. I'm sure we'll see him back out there. 
So second down. Give the Dawkins straight up. So Luke's able to get a few of those yards back, but not enough to even get back to the original line of scrimmage. So we'll set up a second down and 12 from the 32. Well, I will say one thing for the brothers. They, they hit the hole with the same kind of aggressiveness. So, so now this time a sideline warning against the Wildcats. So I hate it when they throw those random flags. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but he, Dawkins, I mean, he hits that hole hard. You know, when, when you got like 40 less pounds, though, that, that makes a big difference, especially when you hit that initial, initial line of defense. Right. All right, so 46 seconds left in the quarter. Should be the last play. Cats leading 35 to nothing. Now they give on the counter to the right side. And is that, trying to see if that was Berger or Day who carried the football there. We'll see once he gets up here, but. Looks like it's Berger. Berger does carry it, so he picks up about five on that play. And that should bring us to the end of the quarter as we're down to 22 seconds, but. Well, Bossy's looking at the first quarter like uh, we are looking at the year 2020. Let's just get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, pretty well the case so far in this football game. The Wildcats pretty well dominating from the start. Just right from the kickoff return by Grant Marringer to kind of set the stage for what we have on the board right now. 35 to nothing, Jasper dominating Bossy here on 18 WJTS. All right, we're set to start the second quarter. Ball at the 37-yard line, third down and seven. And here comes Young, going to throw the football and a little sidearm nice. pass, and he completes right there to Berger. And look at Berger make the move, and he's going to take it a long way for the touchdown. So a little sideline, five and out. Results in another touchdown for the Wildcats, and this one goes 53 yards. It's really good to see Berger have that happen. He's been putting in a lot of the dirty work on crackback blocks and with man coming out to the far side. He's been the man in motion or, or day. Th those are the two primaries. But, this, you know, in the one game where Berger dropped the ball and it looked like a sure touchdown, it, it's really nice to see him get one there. Check out that 63 yards on the touchdown play. Counts were at the 37-yard line, and the kick is straight through. So... No matter who you put out there to kick the extra points, the Cats are able to do that as well. And Sam Leonard with another one right there. So, yeah, and I agree with you, Bob. I mean, again, you know, Berger hasn't played football since his freshman year. Comes out his senior year. And, you know, obviously we already got things established in the backfield with, with Mann and then you have Dawkins. But, again, a big part of that triple off option is what you can do with your slot backs. And we're able to do it with Day, and we're able to do it with Berger. So, again, it just gives us a lot of versatility overall with this offense. Well, to see him lay off and then come back, like you said, and, and be a, a difference maker, you know, there, there's an old saying out there. You, you have teams out there that have athletes that play football. But then when you have football players that are athletes, that's a totally different thing because playing football is a mentality. Right, right. You know, you got to be big and dumb like me. <laughs> and uh, but it is it, there is a, a physical mentality you have to have. So Jasper this year is very blessed to have a bunch of football players that are good athletes. Absolutely. All right. So Leonard continues on with the kicking duty. Sam Leonard, a junior. And he's a beautiful boot this time. That's going to send Harden back a little bit. And he's going to have to field that at the four yard line. But again, if he can get through one of those seams there. Boy, they He's come up the in a hurry. Yeah, again, nice return last time of 38 yards, and this one, Cats are able to slow him up at the 25. It is just so important to stay in your lanes when, when you come down the field so they can't cut it to the back. I mean, when you're dealing with this kind of speed, the slightest mistake, and, you know, it's good night, Irene. You know, and one thing also with this bossy program with Ganaway taking over and, you know, he's been around successful programs and, uh, you know, even got to the NFL at one point. But, you know, with the pandemic, it's really been tough for him because, you know, 
he takes over this program this year. And, you know, one of the things that you have to do is try to recruit players to come out. I mean, you know, I think they had 45 players to start this season. And, uh, you know, again, you're going to have attrition throughout the season and everything, whether it's injuries or guys leaving and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, he was talking about, like at Ben Davis, there were, there were really kind of three things that, that, that was successful for the football program, and that was, you know, number one, your commitment to football, your commitment, and a lot of, a lot of football players ran track, and Ben Davis has always been very successful in track. But also he said, we hit the weight room hard. And so that's something that he's trying to be basically create for this program here. And, you know, he's got his work cut out for him. But, again, when you have a pandemic like we did this year and you're not in school and not able to talk to the kids and, and get kids to come out, it just makes it take a little bit more time to build that. Absolutely. You know, for generations, I mean, back when, when we played to the kids today, the coaches can't be in that weight room every single minute. Right. So they have to know in their heart, that you're in there working or, or really hope to heck like you are. But it, it is up to the individual to push himself that much further and push him that much harder and to have teammates to help you when you start to slow up. Right. And once once they turn that edge, look out for, for Bossy. You know, and the other thing, too, is that um, in the article, the preseason article, they talked about Shane Burkhardt, who's the – and there's a fumble on the football field, so Bame – the tough situation there and was able to not even get back to the line of scrimmage, so he'll lose a couple yards there. But, you know, like Shane Burkhardt, obviously, Bossy's had great success on the basketball court. And, you oh, know, yeah. he's one of the state powers with that. But uh, he's encouraging a lot of his players to come out for football because he just feels like that's going to make them better basketball players. And, and he just wants the kids to, you know, remain active throughout the year. Well, and, and that's the other thing that's really tough for him is being that he's had success in a personal level getting up to the you know the top of the top up with the jets to look out and and to see this you know what it takes and when the kids don't buy into it your patience are going to be tested like no other right so you know if, if he can hold his patience and he can give this two three yards and the kids see that he's actually he doesn't want just them to buy into it he's showing the kids i'm buying into this program right when they start giving you that little bit of trust, you know, good things are going to happen. But that's that's tough to achieve. Right. I'll tell you what, let's take a quick break here while we get the timeout so we can have a commercial break. Jasper up 42 nothing. when we come back. Also have the ball at the 45 here on 18 WJTS. Actually, uh, yeah, it's second down and 12. The scoreboard had first down and 12. I was wondering what's going on there. But second down and 12 here, Bossy with the football. Fame looks to his right now in the middle of the field, but the Cats close in, Fumble. and the ball may have fallen down there on the field. Does not come up, but Wildcats doing the job, and number 68, Jackson Bauer. If I see it right, or is that 66? That's big old Tyler 66. Tyler Kelly, okay, that was 66. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, he's but, uh, Jackson some. Bauer is out there also. He's a sophomore. He's on the defensive line right now. Yeah, he's uh, he's getting playing time for Dawkins in there, but the pocket is actually set up initially really well by Bossy, and then just all of a sudden it collapses. So a loss on the play of about seven. Now quarterback Payne nice has a throw out there, but a nice pop coming up. Cooper Ewing, number 13. It's a nice hit on the receiver, so a good stop there. They pick up maybe about five yards on the play, but sets them right back at the 45, and that's where Bossy will have to punt the football. You know, physical play is, is, is just, it's so addicting. I mean, everybody's doing it out there. You know, for especially last week, the, the goal line stand, everything, everybody wanted to talk about that pop man put on him on, on third down, down by the goal line that physical play you see one guy do it and everybody wants to do it Berger gets a return here season open to the outside if he can turn the corner here but he is knocked out of bounds so gets it across midfield I believe or it's right there at the 50 so a return of about 
26 yards, we'll call it. And so the Cats will have it first and 10 from the 50 there. Well, I tell you what, once he broke that 25-yard line, he got to the 50 in a hurry. He really turned the Jets coming up here on the side. And to Bossy's credit, you know, being down 42 to nothing early in the second quarter, it would have been easy to throw the white flag up and not pursue, but they did. So first and 10 for the Wildcats at midfield. Young will engineer another drive here. Grant Young, 5'8", 148-pound sophomore. And they give it to the fullback, and that's Dawkins, and he loses the football, and it is recovered by the bossy Bulldogs. So ball hit the turf there, and quickly picking it up was Anthony Wide, number 23. Well, when he comes off the field, the brother's going to be sitting there talking to him. You have got to be so strong with that ball going through. And, and he's had a couple of nice plays. He's hit the hole hard. You know, he's averaging a little bit over three yards a carry, which is, you know, what you need in, in a pinch. That, that will eventually get you the first down. But it is so important to squeeze that arm, you know, that football when you go through. All right, so Bossy gets it right back. Punted from the 45 last time. Now actually at the 48-yard line here. So just trying to get it into some playmakers' hands. And so a quick pitch and catch out there to the outside. So the man who recovered the fumble, Anthony Wide, with a big reception there and a pickup of nine yards on that first down play. Well, by far, in my opinion, from start to finish, the best play bossies run all day all night, but they're not trying to beat Jasper deep with their speed. That one there, they tried the little screen pass and we were too far off. So second down and one, 8.03 left here in the first half. Jasper up 42 to nothing. Dominating early on in this football game. So Bain sees an opening to the left side and will run for a first down. So a pickup of about six on that play will set him up at the 36 yard line. So Bossy with the move here. Well, Jasper's interior did a nice job of, of coming in and, and getting a little bit of pressure on him. What they didn't do as what that first unit did was when he was in the pocket, they didn't let the pocket get holes in it. There was one there on the left side. He's seen it and snuck through there. We need to stay in our lanes a little bit better as we come up. Clock ticking at 7.41 right now. And again, miscommunication. It's the split out receiver was Amari Hope, another freshman playing on this varsity team right now, but not able to communicate with the quarterback there and the ball falls incomplete. Well, boy, I, I tell you, when you say a little bit of miscommunication, that's not even being in the same book. I mean, there wasn't anybody within 10 yards. Yeah, we've seen that a few times tonight. So second down and 10. For the Wildcats is pretty well most of the starters are out of the football game. And however, number 14, Luke Dawkins making a nice pop on that play. He started tonight for his brother at the fullback spot. Lance Dawkins couldn't quite get what the injury was, but well, Cameron Weissight, uh, a 6'1", 150 uh, defensive back, did a nice job of pursuing up and turning him in, and there was Mr. Dawkins, and he just finished him off. So good teamwork right there. So third and long, third and nine. Bame, as he has most of the night, flushed out of the pocket, but he's going to get some positive yardage just shy of the 30-yard line. They'll spot it at the 31, so it'll be a fourth down situation here. Obviously down 42 to nothing and in Wildcat territory, you go for it here. Absolutely, and, and as a coach, you're just looking for, for anything. This tonight, even though you know, they're down on the 30 uh, yard line, is Bossy's best drive of the night. So the coach will take some positives out of this into halftime, if we ever get to halftime. And they force the Wildcats to jump off there, so. Number 81, Cameron Wyside playing a defensive end spot is the guilty party. So it looks like they're just a little on this side of a 
five yards needing for the first down. So I think you're just going to be shy. Now they're going to give him the first down. Why not? Yeah, the way it kind of was spotted over there, it looked like they needed about five and a half yards. But nope, first and ten for the Bulldogs. 6-16 to go here in the first half. Looking to get their first score of the night as they trail 42 to nothing. Well, a big mistake by Jasper. Jumping off sides is, is really tough for the defensive coordinator to swallow. But you jump off sides, give him a first down, that just drives him through the roof. Ames going to roll to his right, and he's going to loft it out there. It's going to be short, and it is picked off at the 10-yard line. A turn opportunity there, but that's number 25, Ben Hankey. And he returns it to... Uh, looks like they'll spot it about the 28-yard line, so a nice defensive play there. Short on the pass there, but Hankey, how many times have we seen defensive backs just drop that? We saw Peter earlier with an easier yeah. interception, so it's a good play. You make that play and turn something into it, and he gets it to the 28-yard line. He did a nice job of just kind of floating around back there. We started to get some defensive pressure, especially when he started to roll out. The speed of Jasper was getting away from the size of Bossy putting a little pressure, and he just floated out there in, in outfield just waiting for the ball to come down, read it perfectly, and away he went. All right, so here comes Young running the option. He's going to keep it straight up, and now he's going to open He's going to cross midfield at the 50. He can stay to the outside across the 40 down to the 35-yard line, so what a run there by the sophomore quarterback. He's doing it. Did it against Harrison, did it a few times against Wrights last week, and then a nice run tonight against the Bossy Bulldogs. Well, in the Wrights game where he, he showed a little bit of, of savvy and a little bit of strength of getting around that end, getting that all-important first down on, on uh, when we were three yards short in our territory. But there he showed that he has speed. So, you know, Jasper's future looks pretty bright. So we'll call it about a 39-yard run there for the sophomore. Now they give it on the counter. The cuts inside there is number 18, Victor Peter, a sophomore, 5'9", 150, and he had a nice run there to get it to the 26-yard line. I will say this. That Coach Lewis uh, really has those guys, even though they're not coming in with the size and the strength of Dawkins, it seems like every one of them, whether it's coming on a reverse, whether it's fullback, tailback pitch, they hit that hole with authority. You get a little bit of strength, you'll be able to drag some people with you. But the most important thing and the first thing you got to do is hit that hole with authority, and they're all doing it right now. All right, so second down and three. Jasper up 42 to nothing, four minutes and 23 seconds to go here. And Dawkins gets the carry on the right side, and he'll get the first down. Kind of looked like Lance on that one. You know, he got hit right as he got to the line of scrimmage, and he just bounced off a few and drug a few with him. That was a really nice job of keeping your hips underneath you and driving. Actually, the wind picks up a little bit here at Jerry Brewer Alumni Stadium. Wildcats dominating tonight on Joe Rolletter Field, 42 to nothing inside of four minutes to go here. Wildcats reserves getting a lot of action tonight. And this time, number 22 carries the football, and that's Cale Schmidt, a junior. Yeah, they in that particular one, they Bossy just hit the slant right. They came right off the center's nose, and that hole was closed up before it happened. So about a one-yard gain to the 20-yard line. So. Cats looking to maybe put another one on the board right now. Again, 42 to nothing, 317 to go here in the first half. So it's been all Wildcats, of course. This is a big play right here. Grant Young actually did not pull that one back because it looked like it was wide open daylight for either himself or if he pitches it out to Victor Peter, number 18. But the dive play only picks up about a yard on that play. Well, Mann was doing, when he came in as, you know, at the beginning of last year, um, he was kind of making reads like that. But you stick with it, and, and Mann shows you the way it can be, and Young is not that far off. He can, he's going to get there. Man in motion. He keeps it this time. Now he pitches it out. And right there at the D of Rolletter, 
rolled out of bounds was number 18, Victor Peter. I wonder if they're going to uh, try a field goal here. Yeah, it looks like they are. They're going to give Leonard a chance to do it. So why not? I mean, again, you never know when you're going to need it down the road. Absolutely. So Heichelbeck hustles out there and takes his left tackle spot. So again, number 87, William Schmidt will hold. Nice snap. The hold is there. And Leonard, did he put it through? Yes, he does. So Leonard pops through a 27-yard, well, actually back seven. So uh, a 34-yard field goal. And Leonard, three points on the board. So 45-0, Jasper leads with 2.21 to go here in the first half here on 18 WJTS. So the kicking game's been outstanding for the Wildcats this whole season. Tonight, Sam Leonard gets his first field goal in varsity action, a 34-yarder, and Jasper up 45 to nothing, and Harden, the freshman, had some nice returns tonight. And again, nice head of steam. And I tell you what, that's what I like on kickoff returns. You know, you get, a lot of times you get guys that try to dance too much, and I just love when guys just go north to south because it seems like a lot of times when when something opens up, it's because that, you know, the middle of the field opens up with good blocking up front. You know, they, the specialty team coaches, they, they tell the receivers, when you get it, give them an opportunity to get it set. And like you said, when you get guys up there that do not run north and south, the guys are blocking over here on the left hash mark when he's over here running on the right side. It's like give, trust your team. Yeah. All right, so there's a positive play running the football. Trying to see the number there. Was that number 13? And that's Jaden Thomas, sophomore running back. So he gets a nice pick up there. Well, smart move by their coach over there trying to go to the hurry up. I know there's only a minute 50 left, but they may stay with this pace the rest of the game. Dancing around, and the Wildcats able to close that up quickly. Try to see some numbers. Hanky, number 25, in on the play. Well, when you get the uh, the guys in there, like they're going hurry up now, they don't want these inexperienced linemen to be looking up and trying to figure things out. They want to hit them as fast as they can and hopefully break one. All right, so Bame. He got himself dropped back too deep in that pocket, and eventually the Wildcats able to get there. And coming up with the tackle is number 81, Cameron Wysite. Well, that was just, that's totally on the quarterback. He had plenty of time to throw it away if he needed to. But he got back, and he's been punished so hard tonight. The first thing he was looking for was not his receivers. Where's the Jasper defensive line coming in at? Right. Oh, actually, it was a fumble on the play, so the Wildcats come up with a football. So I was wondering because I thought it was still third down there, but Bossy went off the field and changed with their defense, and so here come the Wildcat offense. Nice Young read. pitches it out, and oh, what a pop there. A couple guys in on it, including number 23, Anthony White, and number 33, Kalen Robb there. Well, they came in and put a put a real nice pop on, on Peter, but Peter just bounced right back up, ran back to the huddle, and said, let's go again. That's right. That's why you wear pads. Absolutely. All right, so Cooper Ewing, number 13, is going to split to the far side. They bring Kabrick, who's in the football game, Charlie Kabrick, but they give it to the fullback on the right side. So a nice run there. Trying to see who carried it there. Actually, Kale Schmidt, number 22, with another carry, and that one picks up. Good chunk of yards, of about five or six there. Did a nice job of running after contact. I, I've noticed that the more clean shirts that are getting in there, each one of them has that same mindset. You know, run, yards after run, run, yards after contact. Grant Young makes the right decision there. Looked like he was going to pitch it out, but then turns up field to so a perfect read. And that will bring us to the end of the first half. So dominated from the very start, the Jasper Wildcats putting 45 points on the board here in the first half, Bob. So thoughts so far of this football game? Um, it's one-sided. <laughs> Workman-like effort, you know? Basically, well, you just got to show up and, and bring your lunch pail tonight. Yeah, at, 
really the big difference in the game is, is you see the athletes over there on the, on the opposing sideline. It's just buying in, and, and they're just not there yet. I, it looks like they've got a few folk players, but hopefully those few players will come more because you are only going to get better when the, in the playoffs if every game you play every week is a battle. Yeah, they've got modern day and coming up in Central and all that. It, it's good to see that in a blowout they're keeping their focus, mm -hmm. but you, you really need that battle, you know, each and every week. So, I don't know. Some guys like a week off in a game like this. I, I'm not one of those guys that just, you know, focus, 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 because it's easy to lose it in a game like this. But Jasper's just dominating. Right. All right, so we'll take a break. Halftime, Jasper 45, Evansville Bossy 0 here on 18 WJTS. Played on Joe Rolletter Field. The Jasper Wildcats with the dominant first half performance, leading this football game 45 to nothing. And took a, taking a look at the numbers, 24 offensive plays run by the Wildcats, 297 yards. 20 rushes for 186 yards and passing, three or four passing for 100 11 yards it shows here. And um, actually taking a look here, um, Blake Mann hasn't played much tonight. Four carries for 86 yards and two touchdowns. And, uh, and he turned things over to Grant Young. He's the second leading rusher tonight with four carries for 62 yards and a score. And then Luke Dawkins getting the start tonight as his brother Lance is on the sideline, and he had five carries for 15 yards. Victor Peter, three carries for 11. Mann was two of three passing for 48 yards and a score, and Grant Young with one and one, one of one passing for 63 yards and a touchdown. So, and those touchdowns also, Caleb Berger with a catch for 63 yards and a score. Isaac Day with a 39-yard touchdown reception. Albrand had one catch for nine yards. And um, Grant Maringer with a 50-yard kickoff return. So just a lot of highlights as far as the offense and the special teams. And that also includes Sam Leonard, who put the 45th point on the board with a 34-yard field goal right there towards the end of the first half. And uh, defensively, guys like Ross Peter doing the job, Luke Dawkins, Jacob Potts, uh, Noah Willoughby also here on the uh, stats here with one and a half tackles himself. So. Dominant performance for the Wildcats, obviously with the score of 45 nothing, Bob. You know, I, I really didn't think it was possible that someone could explain or describe a, a dominant performance and actually be polite about it. <laughs> kind of, kind of ho hum, right? Good. Put almost gracious. 300 yards of offense in the first half. It was, especially with that first unit out there, it, it was like they weren't even trying. It was just either Bossy really has that much growing going to, to do or Jasper's just executing so well that they're playing an inferior team and they're just making it look that easy. So I, I guess we'll, we'll learn about the execution part of it a little bit later on in the season because I'm expecting a whole bunch more of the same here in the second half. Yeah. Because... Our second team played most of that of that that half, or as far as the second quarter goes, and dominated. And for Bossy, Braylon Bain, by most of the offense and three three completions for 50 yards. And Harden's going to field that ball at the 15 yard line. There's the middle of the field. Now he's got that opening, and it just takes the kicker. And the ball was actually he was down before he lost contact there or lost handle the football, but nice return. Feel that the 15 yard line and almost a 30 yard return, we call it a 29 yard return to the 44. Well, the play that stopped that one, the player, I should say, that stopped that one from going to the house was uh, his own teammate, you know, number 28 Madison, just, just didn't get out of his way. He had a good cut, you know, it was kind of a 50-50 shot whether Jasper was gonna get him but that was Jasper's last opportunity. But with his player getting in his way, it just I had nothing, no way to develop. All right, so Bossy first and 10 from the 44. Now Bame's keeping it, but Cat's right there again. Number 18, Victor Peters gonna get credit for the tackle for loss on that play. All night long you've been saying, you know, Peters, or you've been saying Day, or you've been saying this guy, or you've been saying that guy. 
everybody's getting into the act, but no matter who's in the game, no matter what unit is in there, the pursuit is the same. So even though you may have a little bit more experience with that first unit, the way these guys pursue on defense, it, it makes you really feel good about Jasper's future. Right. All right, so loss of two on that play, second down and 12. Already. Man. Bulldogs. I said Bulldogs almost there. The well, Bulldogs call the timeout. No disrespect, but it's <laughs> you know, it's 45 to nothing. <laughs> well, again, you know, again, you're trying to build a program. You're trying to build up, you know, confidence of your quarterback and all that. So it's just we'll give him a break here and we'll take a break. 10, 15, 45, nothing. Jasper leads Bossy here on 18 WJTS. All right, so the Bulldog offense back on the field against the Wildcat defense. Second down and 12. Harden, the freshman. Show some quickness there, but also very quick was Charlie Kabrick to slow him up and allowing the finish there by number 66, Tyler Kelly. Oh, Kabrick was. Or check at 68. That was Bauer, Jackson Bauer, my bad. Kabrick got up there in a hurry. And I can't stress enough to the, to the youngsters out there that are watching these guys play. Not that these guys aren't youngsters, especially to me. But the way they get to the ball and then break down and get under control instead of just flying by and trying to stick an arm out and try to tackle. We've seen those players. Right. They're not successful. These guys are being successful. So two plays and two losses, and that ball is going to fall incomplete. So good pressure up the middle. Again, trying to pick out the number of who made that play, and that looks like it was number 59, Luke Schmidt making a play, so good job for the senior getting an opportunity to play tonight. Well, it's gotten it's gotten to the point with the bossy quarterback to where his main concern is not getting, getting hit anymore. I mean, he has just been absolutely punished in this game, and he's getting the ball out. He's throwing it way early, and that's why the, t the timings are so off. So good pressure by the interior line. So the punt pushes Braylon Bear back, and he's going to have a nice return here, but we're going to see penalty flags fly. So I think this is going to be a penalty on the Wildcats as it rests right there at the 29-yard line, the flag does. Yeah, I believe so. And I didn't, I didn't know <laughs> if he was going to actually throw it. I guess he figured, well, I better, because he was kind of fumbling around. Maybe he couldn't just get a hold of it, but it looked like he was a little indecisive. It's... You know, at this score, sometimes you see that the referees just try to help move the game along. Right. Well, again, it is a running clock. Clock is running. We're right coming up on the eight minute mark. Jasper 45, bossy nothing. Will be a running clock for the entire second half. And it looks like a change of quarterback for the Wildcats. Joey McGimsey, the junior, number six, getting a chance to run an offense here. And I think in the backfield is the senior, William Schmidt, at fullback spot. Dempsey actually keeps it and sweeps to the outside, turns the field, and uh, will get across the 25 to the 27-yard line. So a nice pickup of about seven or eight on that first play. You know, one thing that I really enjoy seeing about this Jasper team this year is guys are in positions right now that they're, they're normally not in. Going in there, having some success, and their teammates are just as happy for them as they, they are when Blake Mann does it. Right. So just great attitude that the black and gold are, are reigning with this year. Cats split out Zachary Merringer and let's give to the fullback straight up. And I'll check out, actually it's number 47 out there. I thought it said 87, but that's 47 carrying the football and that's Evan Crowder. 47, Evan Crowder on the carry for Jasper. Actually William Schmidt checked back in, so I think they're maybe make some change there, but Schmidt's gonna split out as a wide out this time but you know that's the thing too I mean some of these kids like Schmidt came back out for football this year he had a really bad injury his freshman year so you know love it when the seniors that come out for their final season and all that get an opportunity to get on the field and do some things but uh, you know the main thing to help develop a football team is what you do in practice and I think 
you get seniors that are willing to come out that missed a couple years and maybe not get an opportunity to play m much on Friday nights and they can't play JV football at all. But again, their game day is mostly during those practices. Absolutely. And when they get in there, you can just imagine the energy that's running through their bodies. And these guys are really running hard. So there's a nice run there. Should and actually, he, he, yep, they're going to say he was down, but number 47 with another carrier. And that's Evan Crowder, the senior. Showed some nice quickness there to gain eight. Yeah, when he hit the hit the ground, you know, the, the referee had already blown his whistle, and he started to move forward, trying to get back up, try to sell the point that he didn't touch his knee, yeah. and that's where the ball popped out. But but this uh, back judge over here, had he had no part of it. So Schmidt splits out to our near side here. Kabrick goes in motion, and that's a fumbled snap, but the penalty flag was thrown before the snap, so this is going against the Wildcat offensive line. Well, it's uh, definitely one time you're happy to get a penalty. Took out any chance of Bossy recovering that. So that sets the Wildcats back into their own territory at the 47-yard line, second down and seven. Well, as we alluded to with Young, and he came in and had a couple of fumble snaps and a couple of games in, in the previous weeks, he, uh, you, you expect that. You just don't want to see it time and time again. The Cats with a nice surge there. Included number 75, Jack Uvalor, moving his man back. Also out there on the offensive line, Owen Wiseman, number 57, checking into the huddle right now is number 20, Mason Mock, the sophomore. Pretty impressive whenever you are you push the ball all the way up to the first down marker, and when the running back gets up, he looks to the left, he looks to the right, the front and the back, and his linemen are all around him. Gives it to the full back there, and I think he, sh well, looks like the line judge on the far side might have the Wildcats a little bit short there, maybe about a half. But a foot short, maybe, so it's going to be a fourth down here for the Cats. Well, I tell you what, the line judges really played havoc with us last week in rights. One would, one came in on that on that uh, goal line stand. One came in on the four, which is what you called. But then when they placed the ball, it was back behind the five. So I guess the uh, the guy on the far side was the tougher of the two. So McGimsey, the quarterback under center, fourth and inches. They're bringing it. And. I think the second move there will give the Wildcats the first down. So number 47, Crowder gets another run and he will get the yardage. So it should be a first down for the Cats. Well, he gets a big assist from uh, Anthony Wide who was underneath him. So when he spun, his hip didn't hit the ground. He just rolled over on 23 and got that extra. Yeah. So maybe a little pat on the back to number 23. So Marrier checks into the huddle, number 11. Set up in a tight end spot over here is Will Winesapple. Now they run the counter. And good running room there for number 18, Victor Peter. Boy, when he cut that up, he cut it up with authority. And it was a good thing because there was some pursuit coming pretty good from the backside. But because he hit that hole so fast, he was three yards down the field before he was able to lay contact on him. So the Wildcat offense with a little bit of movement here. We're at the 40 yard line, 45 nothing. Running clock here in the second half at two minutes and 10 seconds and ticking. Now McGimsey gets a chance to run the option and a good stop there by the bossy Bulldogs. Trying to see which offensive or defensive lineman making the play, and that was number 78 coming up, and that's Caleb Thomas. He, yeah, he took a little bit of punishment on that, but that would have been very iffy if he would have tried to pitch it. And at this point, you know, just stay away from the mistakes. And he did a nice job of making the read and took the took one for the team, let's say. All right, so number six, Joey McGimsey, the quarterback. We'll run the option this time, pitches it out to Kabrick, can't handle it, and he will lose yardage on that play as he gets knocked back and actually gonna give him the forward progress to the 
about the 44 yard line is where they'll spot that. So it's a fourth down for the Cats. Well, when you run that triple option, when the tailback is a little bit deeper and a little bit further away, you got to put a little bit of pepper on that ball to get it out there. And that one kind of floated a little bit and it was kind of going towards the ground by the time it hit his hands. Did a nice job though of, of getting a recovery. So the Cats will need eight yards to keep this drive alive and they run a counter there and the ball hits the turf and he's gonna be short anyway. So we'll turn over downs to the Fossey Bulldogs as number 18 had the carry there, Victor Peter. Coaching staff is definitely taking notes of the ball hitting the turf. Jasper's getting it back, but that is a teaching moment. And in a game like this, you have to search pretty hard <laughs> right. for, for teaching moments. But that right there will uh, be an opportunity for Coach Lewis and this Jasper coaching staff to you know, let these young men know that even though the game's out of, out of reach, when you're in the game, we expect you to control that ball. All right, so actually Bossy's going to let the clock run out, so they'll have the football to start the fourth quarter. So we're at the end of three. Jasper 45, Bossy 0 here on 18 WJTS. Fourth quarter. Bame Reeves remains the quarterback for the Bossy Bulldogs. They trail 45 to nothing. So trying to make some plays out there, but a nice defensive play coming up. Number 44 with the sack, and that's Noah Willoughby. It just, it just doesn't matter at this point who Jasper puts in there, they're, they're all making contact and they're all getting pressure. And he's getting back there and stepping up and, and the pursuit is just excellent from any player that comes in. So Willoughby, a senior, put a sack in the books for his final year of high school football and they give it to Harden, the freshman on the right side, but the Cats close, well, he keeps his feet and gets to the 45 yard line before he's brought down. High praise to him. It, you know, it, it's when it's this far out of reach and, and the clock is, is run, just, you know, roll over and, you know, go back and, and go to fourth down. But he was fighting for every yard there. High praise. Dane Smith has checked into the Wildcat defensive line and now a nice pass out there and complete. So a good hookup between the quarterback and going to number 23. Anthony Wide. So first down for the Bulldogs. They're looking to try to get some points on the board. The Wildcats with the shutout right now, 45-0. Clock ticking at 10:31. Well, but by far his best toss of the night. I mean, right on point, good timing, good zip on it, and then you know, good things to happen. In Wildcat territory now are the Bulldogs, and they give. Oh, what a pop! What a pop! Make sure we see who made that play. Woo! What a hit by Kale Schmidt, the junior, number 22. He just absolutely leveled the bossy running back. I uh, I almost fell out of my chair on that one when when he hit him. It was just like you get so excited. Did it? To, wow. <laughs> Make Jaden Thomas think twice about that run, but he popped right up as well. So. Bame with a nice toss across the middle to wide again. But look how many black shirts are over there. All but the two that's protecting the backside. So wide gets the Bulldogs to the 40 yard line, third down. Fame looks towards the middle, and he's got 23, and it's still bouncing around. And at the last second, number 19, Ty Wiseman making a play. And that ball was in the hands of number 23 wide, and he wasn't able to hang on. It bounced around. Looked like he was going to maybe recover there, but nice play by Wiseman to knock it off. Well, the ball was definitely coming down, back down in his hands. But once again, the never-say-die attitude of these Wildcats and sticking with it and knocking it away at the last second. Well, you always want to have pride and pull off those shutouts. Time for Bame to he's move around. Trouble. Now he's trying to get up and will he get that first down? 
And they're saying the ball was down, but I think he's going to be short. So it's going to be a turnover on downs to the Jazz for Wildcats. So Wildcats defense been a little bit there, but able to secure so far that zero on the scoreboard. I almost had to bite my tongue on that one because I said about three yards before where they laid the ball down. He had no shot, and he somehow squeezed through there yeah. and made it close. All right, so the Wildcats come back out. Joey McGimsey will remain at the quarterback spot, number six. It's a good quarterback play tonight by Mann early on, then Grant Young took over. You know, the big plus of having somebody like Blake Mann as your quarterback, every player that comes out, especially if you play the quarterback position, nice roll, nice pitch. Pitch out to Kabrick. Charlie gets across the 40 to about the 43. But when, when, especially at the quarterback position, you want playing time. And when you have somebody as talented as Blake Mann, you must raise your game or you got no shot. So when you, it's a blessing to have people like Dawkins and Mann and, and those guys come through because that makes the younger guys work that much harder to get their little scraps. Right. You know, it's also an opportunity right now to kind of go through some of the names on the coaching list for the Wildcats. I know that... We kind of get focused on the football game a lot of times, but obviously with Coach Tony Lewis and some new names we're seeing, like Teague Lewis, also coaching with the team. Joe Shelton is the offensive co or the defensive coordinator. The offensive coordinator is Matt Bajoric, and he's done an outstanding job this year of making a lot of the calls, especially with this triple option offense. Gavin Lake Leiter, Braxton Mann, Jared Land back with the freshman team, of course. And also uh, Joe Buck, Matt Mesmer, Dave Mesmer, they help out with the statistics. So again, Wildcat coaching staff with this football team and they're 4-0 for the first time, Good I think read. since 2013 or 2014, I think the Herald said. So Wildcat team will continue on and actually coming into this football, Game, obviously, with the success that the Wildcats have had so far in the Southern Indiana Athletic Conference. They are ranked number four in the AP media poll this week. And that is ahead of Central, who is number seven, who's also undefeated coming into tonight. In the coaches' poll, they have Central at number five and the Wildcats at number seven. So pretty well interchange either one of those teams. But uh, they will be playing each other in a couple weeks. The Wildcats will have modern day next week. And there's a nice run. That's Kabrick, number, number eight. So he'll get to about the 40-yard line. So a pickup of eight on that play. Yeah, and, and I'm going to go with you, Craig. I, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say Jasper's going to pull this game out. And then the game with Modern Day. But unfortunately, on the, the Central game the very next week, um, I'm going to be out of town, and you and I were discussing it that very well could come down to conference. Right. Of course, you got Evansville North, who's also undefeated in the conference. So the quarterback, number six, Joey McGimsey. Not much running room there. Gets back to the, the line of scrimmage. But yeah, coming into tonight, you had Central 3-0, North 3-0, Jasper 3-0, Wrights 2-1, Castle, who last week was supposed to play bossy, but they had a positive test. I think they were back in action tonight. Actually, uh, looking at the schedule, they were at Harrison, so you would think Castle would have won that football game. But they won't be making up the game, obviously, against Bossy. There's just no room in the schedule for that to happen. So McGimsey, I think, kept the football there. It's going to be a little bit short of the first down. We'll bring up a fourth down there, but, you know, it's really strange the way they do that because being that you would think that if Castle was the one that, you know, they had the test and they couldn't play, but Bossy could, that Bossy should have got that W because the, when you do it that way, not that it, it comes down, you know, the play everybody's in the playoffs, but you could have a two, possibly, well, definitely a two-way tie for the conference. You know, if Jasper and Central don't play, but yet they still go 8-0. Sure. All right, so did he get the first down yardage? McGimsey 
kept the football, but I think he's just going to be shy. So that's going to be a turnover on downs, and Bossy will take over. Clock continues to run as we will run out the final three and a half minutes of this football game. 45-0, Jasper leads. Well, this is when you're the bossy, co the bossy coaching staff that you don't mention that Jasper doesn't have their starters in there. And you go, see, when you play this hard and you and you hit the, the gaps that hard, you can stop, you know, them. It's Yeah, they've scored 45, but, you know, we held them scoreless in the second half. And you just try to build from that. Don't mention the other part of it, but you just you try to build, get some trust, and, and away you go. All right, so Bame's going to keep it to the right side. Cats get the penetration there and make the stop. So number 81, defensive end. It's Cameron Wyside with the stop there. Well, Jasper's doing such a good job of making him go east to west or sideline to sideline for, for the people that don't get that. But, you know, you were talking about on the, the kickoff, you know, guys that go north and south, go north and south. You, you got a lot better chance of getting positive yards if you're going north and south than whether you're going east and west. 226 on the clock as we wind down. The freshman Harden to the outside, trying to sweep there, but a good pick up there by Kale Schmidt. He's shown some quickness getting after these running backs here. Coach Lewis had mentioned earlier about how a lot of these teams that they're going to go up against, they're actually going to be undersized. You wouldn't think that with the domination, but he talks about with their quickness and their technique that they're able to not only – uh, get the job done early, but sustain that throughout the game. And that's what put rights away, and that's what will put other good teams away. All right, Bain looking to go downfield, but again, that pocket quickly collapses, and I think there's a fumble on the field. And the Wildcats recover it, but and I guess they're going to say the quarterback was down, but it will bring up a fourth down. Not that I don't want to see somebody in the black and gold get a – you know, get a fumble recovery. It's it's good to see that this thing's not going to get a whole lot worse. And right. You know what? Kudos to Coach Lewis. He he could he could have been made a huge huge statement, but you know, just he's he's been there before. He understands. Oh yeah. And yeah, really, what's the point? I mean, you dominated the football game. You're obviously the better team on the field. You're winning 45 to nothing and just give these kids a chance to get out on the football field and play that normally don't get too many opportunities, especially the seniors. I tell you, that's a nice over-the-shoulder catch there by Braylon Bear and gets a positive return to the 45-yard line. So uh, Jasper, I don't even know we'll have to run a play. We have 37 seconds and... I think the officials are just going to let this run out down to 33. They haven't started the play clock just yet. They're kind of delaying things until they get the footballs off the field, and we will be inside and just let it run out. So, Yeah, that's a good move on their part. So the Jasper Wildcats, again, whatever their record is, it's a conference record as well because every game is a conference game for this conference, the Southern Indiana Athletic Conference, now 4-0, and and... See if they move up in the power rankings. You know, they have Central, North, and Jasper. One, two, and three in the Courier Journal. I'm sorry, the uh, Evansville Courier power rankings. Southridge was four and Castle five coming into tonight. But uh, dominant performance early on, and the Wildcats just took care of business, Bob. As Jasper's putting up such gaudy numbers right now. They, they did. They took care of business. The one thing you want to do when you run into a team like this, and, and we've all seen it at all kinds of different levels, when you're the superior team, do not let the other team for any reason get any momentum. Right. We almost seen them bite it, bite uh, Jasper in the rear end in the uh, Memorial game yeah. where we had the fumbles. We clearly were a better team than Memorial. Right. It should have been a lot bigger spread, but sure. they, they held true and they ended up getting that. I, I just... You look at these numbers, you know, we talked about before the game that Jasper had scored 99 points in three games. They're up to 144, and they're still stuck at only allowing 24. Yeah. You know, right. so they're allowing six points a game, and they're well over 30. Sure. And if those numbers can stay even half that in their next big run uh, with uh, with Modern Day and Central and Castle and North, and, of course, we end up with Vincennes at home, but... 
that will really make this SIAC uh, conference championship, if Jasper can continue this, just that much more impressive. Well, that tougher part of the schedule is definitely coming up. Again, Rice was a big game last week, and the Wildcats dominated them for the most part, especially in the second half, winning that game. Tonight was not a ball game at all. The Wildcats just getting things done, and, you know, nobody looks like no injuries or anything, so that was a key thing there. And Modern day, a little bit tougher opponent than what we – seen obviously this week and so again that's a home game for the Wildcats but then you get that stretch of Central at Central at Castle and at Evansville North so so it's not going to get any easier for the Wildcats they're going to still have to prove themselves when we get to that stretch there well it, I don't think that with the, the senior you know focus team I don't, I don't think the coaches are going to have to do too much as far as getting them prepared they do have the gauntlet up but don't look too far with too too much down the road at that because modern day will come in and, and modern day is is capable of sneaking out you know a victory they they are 2a we're 4a but they're a catholic school right and well even back in our day memorial modern day they've had people that well let's just say they didn't live in evansville that were on their squads yeah. so uh, but gable being a good coach it, it will be a good game and you know happy for every one of those Wildcats that got out there on the gridiron tonight. Absolutely. So just a final look at the numbers, the Wildcats 42 offensive plays, 366 total yards uh, against Evansville Bossy, 42 plays and just 64 yards. The Wildcat defense doing the job, especially with the reserves that got a chance to play tonight. And just uh, some of the numbers uh, I want to point out there, Joey McGimsey with eight carries for 31 yards in his Backup duty and Grant Young. So really the top three rushers were all quarterbacks. Blake Mann, 86 yards. Grant Young, 62. McGimsey, 31. So, and then Victor Peter with five carries for 22 yards. So the Wildcats dominate tonight and win to improve to 4-0 with a 45-0 win over the Evansville Bossy Bulldogs. So for Bob Welp and Jeremy Marcos on the video, this is Craig Schneider. Thanks for watching Wildcat football here on 18 WJTS. Good night.